My name is Nate Thurston, and across from me uh, is a very special guest, Mr. RFK Jr. How are you doing today? Hey, hey Nate, happy to be on the show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. Do you want to talk Excited about... to tell your audience <laughs> about COVID, <laughs> environmental protections. I'm an environmental lawyer. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I read about that. Yeah. I read about that. Are you going to be in the debates? On CNN? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna poll. Okay. I'm gonna poll up there. Are you gonna get on? But you're gonna get on all, enough ballots. They have a ballot uh, measure there too. You got to get on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Good. All right. Anyway, uh, if you can't tell, our and I'll take a drug test. <laughs> you will. Yeah. You'll take the drug test. Take the drug test. You don't agree with any drugs. That all uh, drugs kill everyone. So you definitely don't have any drugs in your system. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, as you guys can tell, our co-host whose actual name is Charles Chuck Thompson, but we call him RFK uh, today. That will be the day that we call him RFK. He's uh, under the weather just a little bit. We mentioned yesterday that you weren't feeling well, and everyone knew that you weren't feeling well because of that terrible intro that you gave for yesterday's mm. show where everyone almost fell asleep. And so if you're wondering, that was the precursor to how you're feeling today. Still playing out, but I'm still here. Which is even worse. Still, still here. here. I want to talk about economics. At first, I was like, you know, is it really beneficial for Charlie to be on the show sounding <laughs> like this? But everyone's so used to it these days, you know, trying, yeah. to, trying to figure out what RFK is saying, that this is actually an upgrade. So uh, yeah. it's totally fine. It actually sounds like you've fixed your disease, whatever it is. <laughs> I've made great strides. Okay, we've got a couple. I might lose my voice in the middle of the show. So you'll you might have to continue without me. You might. That's like the worst. weird thing about podcasts. Yeah. Is it's all it's audio. You talk. You talk on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so see we, what happens. We got a couple things to go through today. Uh, one of them has to do with an economic thing. The other thing has to do with uh, criminal justice. We'll just call it that. Those are the two main things that I wanted to talk about uh, today. The first thing, it, I was going to talk about it on Wednesday, which is normally White Pill Wednesday, because I was going to say, hey, look, this is how the market works. People respond to the amount of buying power that there is out there in the economy. Prices go up when there's a lot of disposable income, discretionary income. And then when that all goes away, well, look what happens. The companies start to uh, lower their prices. That news story is about Target announcing that they're going to be lowering prices on thousands of basic items as inflation sends customers scrounging for deals. They've also been losing a lot of their market share to Walmart. I see, uh, you know, Walmart typically caters to like lower income people than Target would, but Walmart's been making headway into the little bit higher income category mm -hmm. because they made their... I don't know if you guys have been to a Walmart recently, but they put up product displays. Pretty nice. They got a lot of, you know, they got... Better, better clothing brands there than they've had in the past. And groceries so are good there. They got groceries, you know. I always feel like I get a better deal at, at, at um, you know, Kroger and stuff like that. But whatever. Target plans to cut prices on thousands of consumer basics this summer, from diapers to milk, as inflation cuts into household budgets and more Americans pay closer attention to their spending. I highlighted those words right there. Why is that important? Because when you are flush with cash, let's just pretend that, say, the government sends thousands of dollars to every single person in America, and you just got a bunch of extra income. Not only that, a bunch of stores are closed, and you don't even have a lot of places to spend the extra money that people are sending to, sending to you. Not only that, let's say that you're not even working and you're getting unemployment benefits, sometimes which equal more than you were even getting paid at the job that you were working. And so all of a sudden, people have a lot of extra disposable income going into their bank, bank accounts. They're able to save more, stuff like that. Well, what happens? You can raise prices on your goods. Why is that? Because people are paying less attention to what they're spending. You know, if, you, if, if you're about to go grocery shopping and I hand you $1,000 in cash before you go into the store, the amount that you're willing to pay for a bag of coffee or whatever other good it is that you can name right now, in your mind, might go up. And so you might see something and think, well, that's cheap. And the store might say, well, we actually could have charged more for this. And that's essentially what happened for everyone that was going shopping everywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. 
The price cuts already applied to 1,500 items will eventually include 5,000. Food, drink, and essential household goods. Target and other retailers are increasingly catering to customers who are struggling with higher prices for groceries, though inflation has begun to cool. Mm. They got to put that in there. Many of them have switched to private label brands sold by Target and other big retailers, which are typically less expensive than well-known brands. Uh, Target launched one of the, this is a little bit more like people, stock market people, you know, I don't really care about that. McDonald's last week mentioned that it's uh, going to introduce a $5 meal deal. I gotta tell you, McDonald's. It got expensive. Man, yeah. I went there the other day and. I'm surprised you would go there since well, their food was, is so poisonous. I was out fighting COVID. Yeah. And I just needed something quick. It sounds like you and lost that battle. But my dad was still alive when I went <laughs> to go, when I went. You know, the CIA tried to introduce COVID back then. Yeah. You know, and I went to McDonald's. I think it was, you know, a dollar for the whole meal. Yeah. Used and to I be. just went and it was over $11. That's the 1100% increase. <laughs> From when I was a kid. Yeah, I know. I know. When your dad was still alive. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, inflation has been unexpectedly high in the first three months of this year after having steadily dropped in the second half of 2023. Uh, elevated readings in early 2024 had dimmed hopes uh, that the worst bout of inflation in four decades was being tamed and raised concerns that prices could spike again. Uh, there are so there's also important retail data. And let me just go to that real quick. Retail sales in April 2024, alarming deceleration, big downside disappointment in April retail sales data, plus downward revisions to the prior months. Uh, nominal retail sales grew less than expected and inflation adjusted real retail sales actually contracted. All right. So that's something that these retailers are paying attention to right now. Also, do you think it's possible that these retailers who have been in the business for a long time could see something like this coming? So they got... Mm. So they raised their prices to get the profits while they could. They made hay while the sun was shining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To prepare for a moment like this when the consumer stops spending money at their store because they have to spend money on other things like maybe their house payment. Yeah. In or, fact, uh, I mentioned this last week. I had a long, uh, long episode about inflation and about price gouging and all that. And I went through four different studies from the Fed where they concluded that the uh, the activity they were seeing from retailers uh, was that of preparing for harder times to come, that they, they raised their markups early on uh, when everyone reopened in what looked like preparation for knowing that there would be harder times ahead. So yeah, yeah, it does, that, that does track to me. Now, people on the left have been out there uh, trying to use this as proof of corporate price gouging. Also, the White House had the ridiculous tweet that was the catalyst for me deciding we had to talk about this today instead of waiting for Friday. It was too stupid to not talk about today. Ed Krasenstein uh, said, So you're telling me that Target just now is deciding to cut prices on over 5,000 other products to lure customers back. Maybe those people who blamed inflation on over-greedy corporations were at least partially right all along. Uh, he said, what I find ironic is that Target says they're doing this because consumers are feeling pressured to make the most of their budget. Uh, they apparently want to be praised for doing this. Why didn't they do this over a year and a half ago if they really cared about the consumers? My question is, is if inflation is just a result of corporations being overly greedy and deciding to charge whatever they want to charge, thus raising all of the prices throughout the economy. Why are they doing this at all? That's the main question that you should really ask yourself. Why would they lower their prices? In fact, why didn't they announce that they're just going to raise their prices? Again, so because they could be more greedy. That way there'd be more greedy. Yeah. You want to have the same greed. Did, all the, did they all of a sudden decide that they're going to be less greedy? No. What changed? What changed is the buying power that their customers have, the amount of discretionary mm. disposable income that their customers have. People stop shopping at Target as much. Yeah. That's what changed. That's what changed. So and they want to get people back. How to get people back they, in the door. They started going to a place like Walmart that's known as being a little bit cheaper than Target. And now they need to try and get people back. Walmart, by the way, is like at all time highs. They're doing, they're doing great. They're recession proof. That's where people, you got to buy stuff. Which is weird because they're in competition with them. 
somehow, you know, it's weird because Amazon has a monopoly. Yeah. Yeah. And so how Walmart's doing well, I don't understand it. I know. Oh, well, Walmart also has a monopoly. Oh yeah. That's how they're still doing well. Okay. And yeah. So th those two monopolies, Walmart plus in the same industry mm. uh, are doing well because they have monopolies. Uh, David Hogg, who is who you should always go to for economic advice, mm. you know, second amendment advice, all kinds of, you just want to go to him for advice, actually, just in general. He said, this is in the, uh, the same, is this a dumb bleep? it's, I <laughs> listen, the thing is it's Tuesday, <coughs> it's Tuesday. And I, I don't think we should wait all the way till Friday all the time to talk about some of the crazy stuff that's going on. You know, a lot of times that means that we can't talk about the coolest things that are happening because we have to wait until Friday to talk about it. So sometimes the Friday episodes will just have to be a recap of the dumb things that happened throughout the week. And some of them we already talked about. So <clears throat> David Hogg says, COVID was the excuse, but greed was the reason. Yes, that is a very insightful post. COVID was the excuse, but greed was the reason. No, the whole thing was people were flush with cash because the government printed a bunch of cash and sent it out to people. And, and then closed all the mom and pop stores. Yeah, yeah, that's only another allowed, reason. Like Walmart, Amazon, and Target. Yeah. Like yeah. just those you want to people. talk about COVID? I can talk about COVID. <laughs> yeah, you can rail about COVID I can all rail day. Rail about COVID. You want to talk about vaccines? Yes. <laughs> what about wrong. cell phones giving you brain cancer? Do you want to talk about that? Well, I didn't get a chance to finish that conversation with my dad. So yeah, I know. I only know a little bit. <laughs> the White House tweet, I think, is the most ridiculous one. They tweet out and say. President Biden called on grocery chains making record profits to lower prices for consumers. And they're answering the call. POTUS is calling on other big corporations to join these leaders and lower grocery prices to give families more breathing yeah. room. President Biden, how did you get corporations to lower their prices? And we just asked him nicely. Yeah, he just asked them. You know, he gave enough Uncle speeches. Joe. He gave enough speeches. That's what it mm -hmm. was. He stood at the podium. And he said, these people are price gouging and they need to lower their prices. And miraculously enough, they just kept price gouging and kept price gouging and kept price gouging until they noticed that people weren't shopping at their st stores. No, he gave enough speeches. Oh, enough speeches. <laughs> that's what it, you finally had the neck, the next speech. And that's the one that finally changed every, everything for all the consumers. So just to get this straight. Target says that people have reduced buying power. Their customers are strapped for cash. They're, cash. they're being more price conscious, which is leading them to go to Walmart instead. That's the actual thing that they're saying because we have Walmart's earnings last week and Walmart was like, yeah, everyone's coming here. You know, that's uh, basically what they said. And so they're saying, yeah, stuff's not looking great in the economy right now. And we need people to keep shopping here. And so we're going to lower our prices. And the Biden White House comes out and says, see, I told them they should lower their prices, and now, because of me, they are lowering their prices. And I wanted to tell you, President Biden and the White House, you are correct. It is because of you, but not just the reason that you yeah. want everyone to think it is. Uh, inflation has continued. People's buying power, their disposable, their discretionary income has been eaten away. And now some people are going to have to lower their prices, which is what happens. They raise them because people had a bunch of extra money. Extra money's gone and going negative, and now they need to lower their prices. That's the way that the market works. Target is just as greedy as it was last year. Same greedy. Mm -hmm. The greedy has not changed. Hasn't changed for Walmart or McDonald's or any of them. What they're doing is responding to the market forces, the buying power that their consumers have. That's it. All right. The live group wants you to put an auto tune on my voice <laughs> to sound like T Pain and, and Magoo says C Pain, if you will. <laughs> T Pain. Yeah. Well, if you don't know, my rapper name was C Tilly. It was. Yeah. Yeah, back in your rapper days. Back in I yeah. was gonna bring it up, but I decided not to. I'm glad you're the one that mentioned it, not me. You remember All that right. picture I sent you from uh, yeah. the ball when <laughs> I drew the C. <laughs> good <laughs> that was charlie's uh um, given... introduce me like that on the podcast from now on see okay. tilly all right we'll do see tilly chuck let me show you a couple charts because i've been real big into charts for the last 10 or so years what if i don't like okay. charts well that's fine rfk if you don't like charts yeah. that's okay uh but i'm going to show you a couple charts this is median weekly real earnings is this is a covid chart 
COVID, yeah, this is a COVID spike, actually. Actually, it does kind of coincide with, with that. It, but yeah. yeah. Um, usual weekly real earnings, which means it is inflation adjusted. Interestingly enough, during the time when we were doing all of the COVID stimulus, I found this to be real weird. Okay, the weekly real earnings increased during this time by 9%. Do you know what inflation hit? 9%. 9%. Isn't that weird? Weekly Very real weird. earnings increased by 9% after all the stimulus and prices increased. The highest month was 9%. And then they started going back down after mm -hmm. that. But, but the prices overall, didn't go down, the inflation right. started going down. The actual weekly so real earnings... what you're earnings, saying is, is if you give people more buying power, prices go up. Yeah, because it's always equalized with the consumer's buying power. They it goes find, back to supply and demand. They find that balance. How much can people <laughs> afford to pay for this item? And it's always a shifting, changing, fluid price. How much can people afford to pay for this item? And you give them a bunch of money, and it adjusts. Inflation hit 9% during this time, right after weekly real earnings went up by 9%. Crazy, crazy stuff. So they go back down, and now since Joe Biden came into office, we'll just use it because we're talking about a White House tweet right now. Okay, median weekly real earnings are down 2.14% during is inflation this time. inflation adjusted. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's inf inflation adjusted. Okay. No, they would never show you the inflation adjusted chart, <laughs> you know. Uh, but no, this is the inflation adjusted chart. Anytime you see the word real, uh, that means it's been inflation adjusted. What I also found interesting was that the number for weekly real earnings has come back down to where we were in 2019 before the whole COVID thing happened. So it's where we were in about November of 2019 is people's weekly, the median weekly earnings right now. And I sure wish the prices would go back to that. But maybe on some items they will. Sometimes you find deals. And in my head, I'm like, well, that's 2019 pricing. You know, I saw Dr. Pepper Zeros. They were on sale for like 350 a case the other day. Did you load up? And I was like, no, because I'm trying not to do soda right Dang now. Dang it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to do soda right now. I haven't um, had one in a while. You know, because of the aspartame. And so instead I get this water and then I put these propel sticks in them that are sweetened with aspartame. This is my so. hand. <clears throat> yeah. Not on Dr. Pepper Zero. <laughs> it's an addiction. It really is. I haven't really drank it either because it's not in the house. Yeah, it's not here. It's not here. You know? So um, we've made it back to around 2019 with the uh, weekly real earnings and the prices are still above where they were in, in 2019. We'll see if they get decrease back to around those levels it's not going to happen that's uh, mm. it's just not going to you might find deals on stuff that decrease it back down to those levels or some items that go back down to those levels but uh no it's probably What's not going to happen is, targets lowering prices based on the same incentive that they did to raise their prices yeah it's all profit motive generation it is they want people to come the, there here's the thing it's because they want to be in business mhm mm if you're not making a profit, there's there's no business. So then it ceases to exist. Now, would all the girls be okay with Target going away? I don't think so. No, no, they wouldn't. My no. wife's life would be destroyed at that time. And thus, then my life would be destroyed. And so I'm going to fight for Target to stay yes. in business also right. out of my own selfishness. Regardless of their bikinis with more room. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look at this disposable income per capita. Now, disposable income... That just means the income after taxes. That's really all it means. It doesn't mean that it's extra money that you have to spend on frivolous items or whatever. It's the income that you have after taxes. Now, Biden would like you to see this chart right here, where uh, after he came into office, disposable income per capita has gone up by 13%. You know, that's the kind of thing that they would like people to see. And that's also where you would think, well, why would corporations be lowering their prices? Why would this be happening? That's not inflation adjusted. If you inflation adjusted, it's down 2% from that time. Okay. That's what the chart actually looks like. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's, it's just not a real thing. And the, the problem is like we talked about yesterday, they think that they can just lie their way out of this whole problem. And they think that they're going to come in. I mean, well, a lot of, and a lot of people on the left will buy it. Uh, people will buy it. Yeah. You're right. I mean, in my mind, that's why they do it. It's the same, same reason. It's, well, I know, and it does the work. Market. If it didn't work, they wouldn't do exactly. it. Exactly. If if yes, it, but I don't think it's working as much as they wish it were working. But when I see a tweet of them saying, "See, 
We told them they should lower their prices and now they're lowering their prices. If people actually like that is so ridiculous in, in my mind to think that that's what's happening. Yeah, what no is one is saying Venezuela? like target. It would have been better for target stock if they would have came out in their quarterly earnings and they would say out of the goodness of our hearts and at the direction of president Biden, we have decided to lower our prices just randomly for no reason. We still have, we still have just as many customers as we've always had. Everything is great. We're still making tons of money. We're just going to lower our prices because president Biden said we should have some need form of civic duty. Yeah. We need to do something about this. Inflation. We are going to be the leaders in fixing this inflation problem. This has been our fault and we're going to lower it. That would be better for target stock. Instead, they said, we're losing market share. Customers aren't coming here because we're more expensive. They're going to Walmart instead. And so we're going to have to try and lower prices on a bunch of items to see if we can lure some people back. Yeah. And their stock price went down by a few percent after to they keep, announced that. That's to keep up with the monopoly. Yeah, you got yeah. They got to try and do it. Well, they pro target probably has a monopoly too. God, I don't know it's if so you hard to be that. serious. I know. Can't be serious on this show. Yeah. I just can't. <laughs> Everything's a joke. Well, this is a serious problem right here. Yesterday was Michael Brown's birthday. Michael Brown, you might not know his name when you first say it, but all I got to tell you is hands up, don't shoot. And then you're like, oh yeah, that guy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that lie. Innocent. <clears throat> Innocent. Yeah. Police killing, police brutality, racism, all yeah. that. If you weren't paying attention during that time, we had riots in Ferguson, Missouri. This is a precursor. And this was, <laughs> man, it's rubbing off on me right now. This is kind of what spawned the whole Black Lives Matter movement and then led to, you know, a took bunch off of during George Floyd. Yeah. Deaths and property destruction and all yeah. sorts of things. But Michael Brown was, was the thing that yeah. got this going. Listen to Congressman Cory Bush. She uh, tweets out here. Mike Brown should be turning 28 today, but his life was taken by a Ferguson police officer. In Mike's honor and alongside his mother, I am reintroducing the Helping Families Heal Act, also known as the Mike Brown Bill. So you can, uh, <clears throat> there's a video here. No, if look, we, oh, wait, where'd not, it go? His life was taken by a police officer. That's true. He would have been 28. Well, when she says he should be turning 28 today, uh, she's right about that. He should be turning 28 Except today. his life was taken based on the choices that he made. Yeah. Like, he should have. He should not have uh, attacked a police officer that was attempting to arrest him for robbing a store, you know? And yes, he should be turning 28. This is kind of the idea here from Congresswoman Cori Bush. Hey. Michael Brown should have turned 28 years old. The last birthday he celebrated and will ever get to celebrate was his 18th. Just 81 days after his 18th birthday, a Ferguson police officer killed him. <coughs> In a just world, Mike Brown would be with his loved ones right now, celebrating another year, dreaming of his future as he blows out the candles on his birthday cake. All right, I'm just going to stop it. I'm just going to stop it right here. In a just world, he would be celebrating with his family, celebrating his 28th birthday, blowing out candles on his birthday cake. And the cop okay. would be dead. Yeah, and I guess the cop would be dead or the cop would be in, well, the cop wouldn't be in prison, actually, because in a just world, he would still be alive. And so in a just world, he would have been able to rob a convenience store and then the cops would have seen him walking down the street and just looked the other way and drove off. Because that's the option. Because yeah. when the cop attempted to stop him, he got into the cop's SUV, leaned into the open window, struggled for the police officer's gun, Darren Wilson, ended up getting shot while he was still inside the car, and then walked away, and then turned back around when the cop got out of the car and charged the police officer, and then got shot on his way back to charging yeah. the police officer. But in a just world, he would have been able to rob a store and then get away with it. And he would still be here today. Mm -hmm. Just, just in case you weren't tracking there, yeah. because that's the situation where he would How still do these be alive. People seriously say this stuff. I don't get it. They say it because it, it works. Like this is the sad and disgusting and infuriating part about this is that this has been disproven and disproven and debunked. The Obama Department of Justice did an investigation into this. If anyone had an incentive to make it into something 
Obama's Department of Justice would have had an incentive to do that. This was looked at from all different angles in every different way. And the original narrative that was told by the witnesses that were there, some of them who they found later on weren't even actual there, actually there. Mm. They just claimed to be witnesses and made up a story. And then they were like, well, that doesn't track with any of the evidence that we have here on the scene. Your story is just made up. Yeah. Well, at first, those witnesses are the ones that go on TV or tell their friends a story and they tell everyone, and that's the story that makes it out. And then everyone just believes all witnesses to a crime, you know, because that's a, that's a thing that we do. Despite no one can possibly. Evidence. Yeah. And then, then it's too late. Then you got rights out there and it doesn't matter how many times you disprove this thing. Sitting Congress people will still come out and tell this lie to people and they will use it to stoke racial division, stir up hatred, to, to make people feel like they're victims also, they can use it to gain more power for themselves and for the government. It works out to their benefit. You know, it plays to their base. Maybe a lot of her base might believe that this is still a true story. And so she has an incentive to keep saying this. I do not believe that she does not know the true story of what happened here. It's just something that you're supposed to do. Like it's a, like it's a religion. It's a lie that people have told and that they have to stick to because it's just part of it. The, they can't go back on it. They can't, you know how many times she's probably talked about this. She can't go back on it anymore. Yeah. She's got to keep fighting for it and defending it now. And that's the really disgusting part of this. You get the NAACP. You think, do you think for a minute that the NAACP doesn't have anyone there that read the department of justice's report on the situation and found that Michael Brown attacked that police officer and tried to get his gun and that they found that it was a justified shooting in self-defense by the police officer. Do you actually think that the NAACP doesn't know the real story yeah. of the Michael Brown situation? Because they say Michael Brown should be celebrating his 28th birthday today. We will can, and Hey, that's a true statement. He should be. Yeah. If he robbed the store when the cops found him, he should have gave himself up done whatever little time there probably was involved with the crime and turned his life around and yeah, turned his life around, found Jesus and he'd still be celebrating his 28th birthday mm -hmm. today. All right. That is true. Instead, he chose to attack the police officer, try to get his gun and the cop defended himself. Yeah. It's his fault yes. that he's not celebrating his birthday. It's not the cop's fault. It's not society's fault. Any of these things. They go on to say, we will continue to say his name and fight for justice and accountability. Where's his accountability? Well, he got his accountability, I guess. But, you know, he paid the ultimate price. He got the death penalty, mm. you know, but, which is which is not, you know, look, what, what it, he should have gotten. They're saying sending love to his family and friends. I'm sure this is still sad for his family and friends. It doesn't matter how your kid dies. It's sad, yeah. of course. Even if it was their fault. Even yes. if they made a mistake. Even if they yeah. were a criminal. Yes, it's sad. That's true. Mm -hmm. But doesn't take away from the facts of the case. And you should be like, I'm sad that this is how it played out. Like I wish, you know, my son would have made a different decision. Yeah. Then try to grab a police officer's gun. Like in what realm does anybody ever teach you that that's a good idea? <laughs> you still have people because I read a, um, a PolitiFact, uh, it was a, PolitiFact fact check, only they didn't do a fact check because I think they didn't want to rate something false. They just gave context on the situation. So it was from PolitiFact. And inside of that article from PolitiFact, uh, they had a couple tweets from Kamala Harris. And these are, these are from 2019, but these are still things that are happening. Like Kamala Harris said, Michael Brown's murder forever changed Ferguson and America. And the, now imagine, this is, this is in August of 2019. She knows what actually happened here. She's made Kamala Harris at this point is, has made a living putting black people in jail for not harming anyone, Yeah, you know? And, and so <laughs> she knows what the actual story here was. In fact, she's friends with the Obamas and Obama department of justice did an investigation and found that the police officer didn't do anything wrong in the situation. It was Michael Brown who attacked him. She knows this, this happens before I believe George Floyd was killed in May of 2020, the end mm. of May of yeah. 2020. 
and this is in August of 2019, and she's still out there telling people, Michael Brown's murder forever changed Ferguson and America. His tragic death sparked a desperately needed conversation in a nationwide movement. We must fight for stronger accountability and racial equity in our justice system. What the heck? Elizabeth Warren. Five years ago, Michael Brown was murdered by a white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. Michael was unarmed, yet he was shot six times. I stand with the activists and the organizers who continue the fight for justice for Michael. We must confront systemic racism and police violence head on. These are tweets that occurred uh, eight or nine months before the George Floyd situation. And we all saw the mostly peaceful summer that we had in 2020. <laughs> okay. This is, I mean, this is incitement to violence. <laughs> it's not legal incitement to violence. But morally, these people have a responsibility for some of the things that happened in 2020 by continuing to lie to people over and over again. Because mm -hmm. not everyone's going to look at the 86-page Department of Justice report and read exactly what happened and all the statements from every witness, even the witnesses who ended up saying, yeah, I lied about that. I was hands up, don't shoot. Someone told me about that. And so I told you that I saw it. And by the way, that person that told me about it, we found out they lied about every other thing that they said to. Like, mm. you can read the whole 86-page thing, and a lot of people aren't going to do it. They're going to listen to their community leaders, their political leaders about these things. And this is the kind of stuff that leads you to what happened in 2020 with everyone losing their minds. With this, And it's going to, guess what? Next year, at this time, we're going to see the same post again. They're going to be talking about Michael Brown. Once again, and on August 9th, which is the day that this actually happened, we're going to see the same post again, talking about how Michael Brown was killed by a white police officer. Here coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll see the George Floyd stuff. Mm -hmm. at the and end of May. The, the more time goes on, you know, I, I, I know I'm really behind the times on it, but I mean, it kind of seems like that police officer, now I'm getting them confused with uh, Darren Wilson, Derek Chauvin uh, was, uh, was that cop. He needs a new trial. And I'm not saying he shouldn't be found guilty of anything at all, because mm -hmm. you could say that there was like an excessive use of force or whatever, but he needs a new trial. It needs to not be in Minneapolis and he needs jury members that weren't also like black lives matter protesters, <laughs> you know, stuff like that, or jury members who said that they were scared. I do think, in another I mean, way. I think the George Floyd, incident is different in the fact that he was already detained and you didn't need to keep pressure yeah on yeah. his neck yeah like he, you it, know? it seemed like you could have let off pressure at that time right he was already handcuffed he was laying face down on the ground yeah i would say that that's you went too far that's what i'm saying there's <clears throat> and a lot of times you can see this because you know on the show i think we talked about this when this happened four years ago a lot of times police, they'll get their egos hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And they have mm -hmm. the use of force. They have a license to use force. And a lot of times, especially like when you see a police chase or whatever, they'll drag the guy out of the ground and hit him as many times as they possibly can, yelling, stop resisting, yeah. because they're angry. They're mad. They're mad. And so that kind of stuff. And I, and I think in the George Floyd incident, Derek Chauvin was mad. Right, that he had to struggle a bit with this guy who was on the ground, and now he was in a position of power, and he abused that power. I do think that he should get in trouble for that. I said that four years ago. In the way but, that police officers who abuse that power should get in trouble, but murder? I don't think it's murder. I, I really don't. Well, you could argue manslaughter. His actions led to the death of an individual. Involuntary, whatever accidentally leading to the death of someone, like whatever that is. Uh, funny, funny thing, by the way, I was listening to uh, Ben Shapiro the other day, which is just something that I do. I'm sorry. I get like the very right wing perspective and I get and I listen to breaking points and I get like a left wing perspective and I listen to those two things every day. Well, he was talking about that golfer who got arrested. Oh, yeah. Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. 
It's the first time I ever heard Ben Shapiro immediately defend the guy who got arrested and say <laughs> that the police officer was acting stupidly. And he, he goes on this tirade about how, you know, cops, a lot of cops out there, they just get too excited and they get the opportunity to arrest someone and they just get, you know, they, they just get way too excited about it and they decide they're going to take it way too far than they actually should. And I'm like, you mother... <laughs> yeah. I would never hear you say this yeah. if this were a poor black man yeah. that was getting arrested. Yeah. You know, you, you wouldn't. If it was Tiger Woods, he'd probably say the same thing, you know. <laughs> so it's, it, <clears throat> it, and I don't even By the really, way, did you see this guy's Scheffler story? I saw, I did. I heard, yeah, I heard Dude a lot of the story. actually got taken to jail, booked mm -hmm. in an orange jumpsuit, made him change his clothes. Yeah, because he had a he was charged with felony oh, assault on a he police have officer. He played the tournament in his jumpsuit. That would have been good. He came back, <laughs> made his tea time, and shot a five hundred sixty six at a major championship. <laughs> That's pretty what good. What in the world? Now the next day he didn't do very well, but it's pretty good. It's so crazy. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyhow, that is some focus. By the way, I did bring it. We basically already discussed everything from the Department of Justice report, but. <sighs> I don't know how you stop people from continuing to spread lies about specific situations. And the reason I tie this in with the George Floyd thing is that these things are important. Uh, continuing to keep people riled up. There are, there are a lot of unjustified police killings of people. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of stories. It's not that there's a ton of them that happened every, that happened every single year. Uh, we were looking at the stats just yesterday on that. Um, but there are plenty of people where we can say this was an unjustified police killing. But when you pick one that seems to be completely justified and you use it as, well, this was a white police officer. This was a 18-year-old uh, black guy. And clearly this is out of racism. And then you have riots about it. And then every year on the anniversary, you rile people up up about it you have two dates every year his birthday and the anniversary of the day that he died and you get people riled up that's what leads to the crazy summer of 2020 that we had you know you just finally get that one thing and coupled with people not going to work because they weren't allowed to go to work mm -hmm. and so let's just go protest you know yeah. and so getting paid by the way yeah getting paid to do that and by getting, getting paid more you remember doctors coming out and saying that black lives matter protests were okay for people yeah. to go to because racial justice was more uh, dangerous was more important than coronavirus <laughs> I do. Look, imagine the we gaslighting we've had to go through over the last few years. It's just the last four years have been absolutely insane. Ugh. Insane. Anyhow, we have to uh, we have to keep talking about these kind of things because I guess eventually everyone will hear what the truth is, and we know what the truth is on this matter. We don't have to go any further into it. We already told you what happened. Yeah, but so go right here because I think this is important. That Wilson and other witnesses stated that Brown reached into the SUV through the open driver's window and punched and grabbed Wilson. This is corroborated by bruising on Wilson's jaw and scratches on his neck. The presence of Brown's DNA on Wilson's collar, shirt, and pants, and Wilson's DNA on Brown's palm. So all of the forensic and physical evidence points to the fact that that Brown was trying to wrestle this cop in his car and get his gun. Yeah. And so what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? I don't know. If you would have drove off and, and ran over, ran over him or something, it would have had the same kind of outcome. You know, cop runs down black man with his car needlessly while his hands are up saying, don't shoot. You know, it's basically what that would have ended up with. So the moral of the story is this was Michael Brown's fault. Uh, don't steal stuff. And then don't try to, steal an officer's gun. Don't attack an officer and try to get his gun inside his car when he comes up to try and question mm -hmm. you or arrest you. By the Just way, don't all, do it. all the evidence points to the struggle over the gun. Yeah. No, literally, it, this is a, it, this is a conclusion. This, this is a conclusion found in evidence. Okay. It's not even a conclusion, not found in evidence. We've got the evidence on it. We know what happened. It's not even, a, this is not disputed anymore. This has been investigated by multiple bodies multiple people, multiple times. We know what happened on this one. And the fact that people are still willing to go out there and knowingly lie about it uh, is infuriating to me. And it yeah. has, 
it has repercussions in our society. It it does. Like burning buildings. Like burning buildings down. <laughs> attacking people. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Division. It also creates more animosity between black people and the police. Now, there's been plenty of bad altercations, you know, bad instances. And I get that. But I also think it leads to more problems because I think people might be less willing to cooperate uh, in some instances because of all the hatred and animosity that there is. And which then leads to more problems and creates a, a cycle, you know? Mm. So... I don't know, man. That's all I got today. 